a lot of people don't talk about is single room occupancy for Airbnb. We posted one of the bedrooms on Airbnb for like a month. Man, we liked it. Same like, house that you live yeah. in, you rent it. We tried it. But a lot of people flow, were thinking we're crazy. But first of all, you're clean. You pocket 100% of your cleaning fees. Let's say you charge, you know, 50 bucks, 100 bucks cleaning fee. Well, it's in your house. It's in your room. If you have the time to clean it, that could be your additional income. That's a good idea. Hey guys, welcome back to Property Sales Group Show. Thank you so much for being a subscriber. If you're not, go ahead, smash the subscribe button for YouTube algorithm. This video is gonna be super special. I had a powerhouse, Yana and Igor, a very special people here in Sacramento market. They have close to 15 rentals. We went through all the details when it comes to rentals and investment real estate. And they specialize when it comes into short-term rentals and even uh, real estate when it comes in buying and selling. And trust me, guys, if anyone can teach you about rentals, it's not gonna be me, it's gonna be them. So I definitely strongly recommend watching this video from the beginning to end, because there's so much valuable information there that I promise you is gonna show you a couple of ways that you can actually make some money on the site when it comes into short-term rentals. Welcome everybody back to Property Sales Group Show. You guys in for a treat today. I got nothing but the best. The whole power couple. I got. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the show. How are you guys? We're doing good. Thanks for having us. Yes, Tell everybody you. in the audience who you guys are and how long you've been in real estate. So we are like a small real estate team. I mean, I'm, I'm a realtor. My wife is a mortgage broker. We do a little bit of everything. We're kind of like a one-stop shop. Yes. <laughs> we do some property management for our properties and some of our partner properties yes. as well. And we've been doing it, I've been in real estate for about seven years now. Yeah, so yeah, we, we, we kind of met through real estate. We, yes. <laughs> Our first date, we talked about real estate and multi-units and investing, all kinds of stuff. Yes. That's so, awesome. It was supposed yeah. to be a business date that turned personal <laughs> really quick. Well, that's the only way to write off, right? The business lunch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, that's awesome. But a lot of stuff they're saying, it's, uh, it's a little bit like, uh, an iceberg because they do way more. They're actually super successful when it comes to investment real estate. And this is why I wanted to bring them on the show so then they can show how it's you, you as a regular consumer who doesn't have any real estate can actually get into the game, right? Because getting a deal traditional, which is like a single family residential, it's actually much harder than getting a duplex for yourself, right? Oh, exactly, yeah. exactly. So, we, we, you know, and you can probably talk more about it, but... Financial it, side of it, for sure. Yeah, yes. so like, you know, if you're, bu if you're buying a single family home, it's gonna, you're looking at different financing, you know, types of loans, right? Yeah. You got lower down payment, you have lower interest rate. When it comes to small multi-units, that's what we kind of specialize in. That's a, kind of our niche. So whatever you say, how, however you say that word, right? Yeah. But when, so when I first started that we kind of started focusing on multi-units, like small residential multi-units. From the very beginning. Two yes. to four units. Like when it gets to five and over, that's commercial. So we stay, we stay below f five and we focus on, you know, duplexes mostly. Yes. So, and, and yeah, the financing, you know, financing is a little different, but I feel like the cash flow is better on the duplex for sure. For sure. And financing, you can, oh, you don't. There's like this misconception that if you buy an investment property, you need to have a lot of down. Well, if you're buying your first investment property, you can buy it as an owner occupied, where you give a minimum down payment, which can be only three and a half percent if you do an FHA wow. on a multi-unit property. So you can come in with little money and buy yourself an investment property, then use that as your first step in your further investments. So would you recommend somebody to instead of buying a a single family for the first time to rent it, just go straight into a duplex? 100%. Would that gonna be like a smart choice to do? Yes. Yeah, so if we're talking about, I mean, are we talking about more, you know, it depends on what your goals are. If you're gonna, air, if you plan on Airbnb. What if Airbnb I have like say 3% saved and I'm like so excited, I got two years of my W2, you know, I'm ready to buy the four or 500K home, but I wanna live in it. Well, so For generational wealth, you didn't mean, obviously, I think it's easier would be to go in and buy a duplex and move in in one. Yes. But then it's a lot easier of people to scale. Do that. It's easier to scale. Right, right. So, I mean, it depends. So, like, we, we, we talk, we, we have some people there, you know, they have families and they don't want to live in a duplex. So, if you have $500,000 that you're pre approved for, 
you can get like a really nice house, single family in Roseville. You know, it's going to be really nice. Or you can get a crappy duplex for $500,000. <laughs> Most people go for the nice, you know, shiny object, right? Yeah. But if you can get past the fact that, you know, it's a it's a start. It's a small home. It's a small duplex. It's a start. But if you if you if you can waive, you know, majority of your mortgage by living on one side and have the tenant pay for your side, I mean, it's a step. It's it's a step towards something else. You're saving a lot of money that way. Yeah. Just I feel like a lot of people out there when they do buy themselves a rental, they they don't do it because they're scared that the rental's not gonna pay. You know what I mean? Like yeah, we are yeah. in California, and California is a tenant friendly state so yes. that means that hey i mean that's all like amazing generational wealth building assets but then if i do it and then because there's a lot of people that did get burned on the first deal you right know, like what is what's have you had anything like that happen to well, you guys knock on the wood we didn't <laughs> right but you it's you, it's really important to screen your tenants i mean what's your screening process like you know you can't just get the first available person that applies you know for that unit you have to screen them you have to make sure you like them you Plus, know. if you live in that property, you have more uh, uh, you have more rights to screen your tenant because it's the property that you live in. So you can pick whoever you want to have as your neighbor versus if you're buying for investment property, you can't really pick it as yeah. much by law standards. Yeah. Yeah. There's a, you know, there's discrimination laws that go into effect. It's it's a little bit more challenging if you're if you're going through a property management, they have to kind of select you know, the first available tenant that applies if they qualify. But what if you're looking for a family? What if you want a specific tenant? So you just have to be really strict in your, um, you know, application process and, and, and just kind of find the perfect tenant for you. I think that's going to eliminate a bulk of the headache gotcha. later on down the road. Is there like three things that you look that is non-negotiable in a tenant? I mean, I've heard some people actually like when, the, when they have open house for tenants, they actually go and look at their car just to see how clean it is. That's, That's actually yeah. you know one I mean? of like, the first yeah. things. That if, <laughs> I also do, if I have their name, I do snoop their Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> the reason why. If Keep I, your Facebook clean, guys. <laughs> uh, I'll tell you why. Because you can see by the pictures that people post whether they're clean or not. You can see the background of the house that they live in. If it's yeah. messy, you're place that you're renting will be just as messy as That's the one true. that they're showing on the picture so i do that and it helped a lot and i even at the times when i wasn't 100 percent sure on the uh financial side because there, there were more newcomers they didn't have that solid 100 percent job i did look through their facebook i saw how they live and it gave me the comfort to rent to these people gotcha so even yeah. though their credit might be good they have good job but if, if you go on facebook it's like they live in the rental. It's a mess, yeah. Or something you would just. Or they're posting pictures of guns and stuff. You know, that's <laughs> not the kind of picture. You, that's not the kind of tenant you're going for, right? Or what like, if they're like pro amendment, you know? <laughs> well, no. yeah. I mean, it depends. <laughs> guns are fine. I think if they're posting uh, that they're having like a hookah or something like that in their. Gotcha. In it their depends property. where you it have a gun. If you're out of... shooting, you know, in the nature, that's fine. But if you have guns in your house. And you're taking pictures with the cigarette. You know, <laughs> you know, I'm trying to paint. I can a only imagine picture coming here. in. Hey, make sure you pay your rent. The guy comes out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, that's not the type of person you want, for sure. No, that. I mean, that's actually a good tip. So thank you for that. But what about like underwriting a deal? I know if when we look at fixer up, or we look at hey, there's concessions, there's remodel, and then there's profit that we're looking to make. So that's mm -hmm. very easy to underwrite when it comes in fix and flip. But how do you actually? on the right deal because sometimes I see those rentals that shows up like on MLS it says a duplex in Citrus Heights 600k and I'm like oh my god that's like that's so expensive mm -hmm. but how do you actually underwrite it not to miss those good deals that do come up on the market or even off market if it's even possible yeah so I mean so we every deal that we buy we underwrite using the burst strategy if you know what that is so explain, you, explain that so I kind of so know because there's i know the burr is you buy renovate exactly rehab exactly. and then refinance and then do and it then again repeat, repeat but that I, that's I, rent too there's burr, burr, burr. Yeah. <laughs> so you add the rent I, in the like end. <laughs> I, I thought that's only for single family applies because i mean like you rent it but then i just well it applies to i think it applies no it applies to single family and duplexes too but the, the biggest thing is that when, when we're buying burrs, there's a specific strategy. There's a specific numbers that we look for. Yeah. We have to be able to get it at 50% of the ARV. 
right? Return so on if, investment. Yes. Yeah, so, <laughs> so right away, if you know the yeah. the comp is seven hundred, right. half. Yeah, you sl you slash half of it. So if the property is six hundred, you want to try to buy it for six uh, for three hundred. Wow. So and you know those deals don't come along very often. You have to really like you know it took us. I don't know, three years to, to get, you know, three properties. So one property a year. I know, I know there are folks that like you guys, you guys are really active in the field, but for us, we're, um, you know, it takes us a while to find the property that meets that criteria. Yeah. yeah. We so have a very strict criteria when it comes gotcha. to the properties that we're buying. We yeah. did buy a duplex in Citrus Heights. Mm -hmm. And I thought the rule of thumb would be, Hey, if you can rent out at least 1% of what you're buying it for, that's a really good deal, right? The one percent rule, yeah. yeah so, so that's what I yeah. thought. Like, oh my god! Like, if I can get a duplex, let's mm -hmm. say worth, I know I can rent it for twenty four hundred because it's three bedroom, two bath, mm -hmm. two car garage, and it's both. Mm -hmm. And I'm okay if I can buy that duplex. That's what we did actually. We bought it for four eighty divided by two. It's two forty a unit. Mm -hmm. Comes out, hey, one percent. It's twenty four hundred bucks. I thought it was a pretty good deal, but if I know it's seven hundred, I should have sliced in half. I would have been able to get an even better deal. Because that's like even more stricter criteria than even the one percent rule that you're yeah. talking about. Well, the whole the whole uh, thing about Burr is that you have to refi afterwards, right? And after you refi, so after you pull all your equity out, the property still needs to cash flow. So we're not going for <laughs> so so we're not going for cash flow right away. We're going for cash flow after we get all our, all of our equity out. There's of the so property. much nuances coming, like the repairs. Yeah. You open up a yeah. wall, and it's like the whole wall, of the course. floor is dry rotted. Like, how do you? Yeah. I mean, like, it, I, I don't. It's gonna be really hard calculating all that. Yeah, yep. but I mean, so I mean, after seeing a lot of properties, right? You kind of like you as an investor, you probably looked at hundreds of properties last year, right? Yeah. So when you go into a place, you kind of have a feeling like if you're looking at the 1980s built, you you already know if it's on you know standard foundation, you're probably not going to have termites underneath, you're not going to have dry rot, so you're not going to have you know some of the problems that you would have on the 1950s built. So you, gotcha. you kind of you kind of know which properties are more problematic, which ones are not. And you try to stay away from like older properties, properties with race foundation, properties with, you know, bad location. So, I mean... Bad location is the key, actually. Yeah, probably so like in, it in eliminates suites. a whole chunk of, you know, potential properties. You're looking at nicer, gotcha. newer builds, you know, things like that. So, yes, and of course, things will come up. I mean, you're going to have, you know, we... So like I mean the probably the most more extreme example is we bought this four unit in downtown uh, last year yeah and uh, yeah it was it was probably one of those nightmare situations our budget was like you know eighty thousand dollars on that rehab I think we spent uh, <laughs> two fifty two fifty <laughs> so a lot more a lot more I mean it but was what, one what of those what was the stuff that you didn't see because you're saying slice in half you walked it but what was the nuance you're like oh my god like I wish I caught this doing inspection uh, we like, yeah. had one of the um where they had a kitchen they had this um build out that they did and we found out that that build out was not built on foundation it was actually a, a deck that was then turned into a part of the house and they yeah. put another deck to it so we had to raise up the house wow. and poor foundation the under footing, it. You gotta put the yeah, footing. So imagine yes. that. It's a we actually had house, the same yeah. thing right now. We actually have a house mm -hmm. uh, in Citrusides that we bought it. Mm -hmm. We went through the taxer on MLS, mm -hmm. all legit. Square footage, everything. We went to an inspection. What happened is like in 1970 or something like that, they just never finalized. And back in the days, those codes were different than what it is right oh, yeah. now. Yeah. So it was like, it was poor, but wasn't long enough. And because it was not filed, you have to redo it. And because you redo it, you have to bring in code thirst today. So we had to, right now, we're actually jacking it all up and reporting like a big portion of the house and foundation. So I know exactly how you guys feel. Yeah, and yeah. that adds up a lot It was of money. a costly repair. I mean, and then we something... had a water problem too, where the pipes had, the roots got into the pipes. We didn't know where the leak was. Nobody yeah. could detect the leak. So we ended up changing the whole line. So there's a lot of things that come up, but in the end of the day, it still ended up being a fairly good property. Yeah, I mean, it's, so we, we bought that one with, with the intent to, uh, you know, STR it, uh, Airbnb. Because of the location, because of proximity to, you know, all the, you know, the uh, old Sacramento, all the tourist attractions. So we're still doing well. I mean, that that became our Airbnb. We have 
uh, one one medium term uh, tenant. There's one, two uh, units. There's a, it's a Victorian house. It's an old house. It's 120 years old. So wow. when we even Which were is doing probably part of the problem why we spent so much money <laughs> because, uh, rehabbing well, it. Was it like a historic too? Did you had to like keep most of the uh, outside? Uh, we oh, did, we definitely we did. did uh, Just to keep it to preserve the. Mm -hmm. downtown vibes and stuff I like that? I actually, uh, I paint and it helped because I drew the exactly the look that we're going for and I brought it to the planning department and they overlooked it and they said that, yeah, we like the design, you guys keeping it the same, you wow. keeping it authentic and that's what yeah. we did. So it goes back to, you know, all those things that we talk about. I mean, those unforeseen, you know, circumstances like, you know, no foundation, uh, old rusty water lines, um, you know, underground, th those are hard to detect. Uh, historical homes. I mean, you run into a whole can of worms there. You can't do anything to the outside. Uh, you know, we started fixing some dry rot. We and, and uh, we didn't think we needed permits for it, but we did. So we had to go through this whole process of, you know, which took about six months. So, anyways, um, there are things that you don't foresee, um, but uh, I think with time you kind of know what to what, what houses you want to avoid. Yeah, with experience you yeah. learn because you're like, oh, I'm not doing it, yeah. and then maybe you can find a different buyer for that. Yeah, and yeah. Then make the commission. Yeah. As well, an now Asian. I mean, now that we fixed all the problems, we're gonna we're planning to keep that property. <laughs> That's right? not gonna be. There's time. no issues on yeah. that one. <laughs> yeah, we we know what we did. I mean, we updated everything, so we're gonna keep that. That's awesome. So. How many rentals do you have right now that you keep in your portfolio? So uh, we have a total of twelve units. Uh, one of them we live in. Yes. We have uh, three that are still under construction right now. So okay. one one unit that we just recently bought that's like beautiful. It's gonna be. It's probably gonna be one of those tiny homes. So we're gonna try to make it really Instagrammable, you know. And then we have two other ones that were. It's a slow process. Yeah. But we have uh, five long term, uh, two short term, and one medium term. Yes, that's right awesome. Because yeah. I know for a fact that Airbnb changed their model because it got so much. Uh, popular over the past two years right. that a lot everybody you you know you go to a gas station Airbnb yeah. you you pull up online Airbnb so they changed their I guess their algorithm in the way that they prioritize the unique properties that one-time exactly. experience so that I think that's gonna be really fire because you're gonna have the tiny home kind of like experience I know I would think it would be pretty awesome if you can put in like experience the new New York vibes within Sacramento and build like three by three tiny home that yeah you know what i mean and you just rent it for like 500 bucks a yeah. night <laughs> yeah so we like to experience That's really things, cool. and we kind of like to diversify N none of our properties are the same <laughs> like we have you know we have this modern property we have a mid-century property we have a historical property and then we have this tiny home so we we kind of we we, we want to diversify right so last month our downtown property did not perform as well as our, you know, uh, uh, suburban, you know, Sacramento house, which was a surprise. And like, because everybody was happen? telling us, oh, that one, it's not the area for the Airbnb because it's not really touristy. But when we looked at the map, it's 10, 12 minutes away from downtown. It, and when you are a traveler, you just look at it and. Uh, yeah, because downtown could be like 500 bucks a night. Your property could be like two ninety nine, and people are like, hey, for 12, 12 minutes away, I'll I'll yeah, save one hundred fifty bucks. Oh, you yeah. can drive, or even Uber, you know, yeah. which is pretty cool. Because there yeah. uh, is there a specific website you guys use for uh, pulling the data to figure out if this is going to be a good fit, or how to even underwrite before you buy like the short term rental for Airbnb. I, you know, I know there are websites out there and There's I've looked into them, now, but yes. we, we're, I mean, we really do it the simple way. We, we just go online, we go on Airbnb, right? And, you know, this property that we're planning to buy, we just looked, you know, we just booked the dates that let's say you want to, you want to book something a week from now, what's available and um, you just kind of do the pricing. You look at the pictures. Some of them are just... You see uh, your you, competition that you just, way, right? You just gotcha. can't believe those Airbnbs are on there and they're getting booked. I mean, the quality of pictures and the, <laughs> the design and staging is horrible, yeah. but it works. So you're like, okay, so you factor that in and you look at some nicer properties and then you kind of do... And you kind of look at their calendar, see how many dates are booked. And then you just, uh, you know, that kind of gives you an idea. I mean, I, I, we should have probably used some sort of paid, <laughs> you know, <laughs> subscription service or something, but we didn't, you know. No, you guys are killing But it. we're like, we're yeah. a smaller team. I mean, we're a mom and pop shop. And like I said, we, we just recently started doing short-term rental. So for, you know, for the last seven years, we've been doing a long-term. Long-term, uh, yes. Do you guys see better success doing the Airbnb route versus traditional renting to like a regular Joe? Um. 
I would say that when it comes to short-term rental, you have a little bit, um, you have more access to your property, so you know it's always clean. You know that it's always the the ben- uh, the, the downside of that that it is it's not as stable as a long term because you know the long term you know exactly what you have for next month and it, a year ahead basically. Yeah. Uh, with short term, you don't have that luxury, so it's a little bit more risky when it comes to stability. Uh, and but as long as you have your team ready, you have your cleaners you answer correctly and in time matter because it's all affects your rating and airbnb if you have those things uh, those wheels basically greased and they're moving fast it's it's great investment but there is if you want to be more i would say let's put it that way if you want to be more hands-off go long term if you want to have it uh, maybe a little bit more income expect to be more hands-on on on it go with airbnb yeah airbnb is definitely uh, more time consuming uh, even though we have, you know, a property manager we hired um, that helps us with, you know, answering messages and advertising it, and we have a cleaner, we're still a hands-on. Like, you know, sometimes, like we had a crazy party on Halloween. Right? <laughs> no way! And somebody stole a bunch of things from our house. Like, they, so we had to come back. We had to, you know, do some touch-ups. Do some. So it's it's more, you know, like t- time consuming. I can what, only imagine them. Yeah, like what if we were in Mexico? You know, then we'd have to hire somebody and. But long term, I mean, our our units are pretty much hands off. Like we don't hear from, you know, tenants for it could be a year, it could be two years unless wow. something breaks. And which, if they break, I do have a home warranty. So I just call a service. Yeah. They come in and gets fixed. Everybody's happy. Yeah. Wow. I'm fairly hands off of it, too. So it's it helps. Yeah. It, it's that's why that's why we like to diversify. Right. There are some units that that are, you know, we're we're taking a hit on cash flow, but we're we it's it's, you know, you know, you got the just the peace of mind. The, you don't get bothered too much. And then, you know, if we're going for cash flow, then yes, I would say go to either medium term or short term route. Medium yeah. term is actually another one that's often gets overlooked. I think there's a lot of opportunity in medium term. Uh, and medium term uh, rentals are those that basically like uh, nur- nurses, uh, traveling uh, nurses that rent for yeah. a month, for two months, for three months. But you got to be in pers- uh, proximity of the actual probably hospital right that's the first thing do you do when you buy a property you look at the proximity to things gotcha. so is it close to the hospital is there a flow of people that coming that way uh, if if you have that taken uh, basically you put it in a line from the beginning you already know what to expect so, so, yeah. so one of the if we know that the, our property is close to hospital another property is very close to veterans hospital so we know that we can get advantage in that space gotcha yeah. but when are you guys gonna pick up a deal somewhere like a vacation place you know like that's Big in the Bear, we were thinking like about Tahoe Hawaii something. that's <laughs> in the Hawaii works. sounds pretty cool because yeah. not only you can uh, have that property and rent it out you can go there and while you're on vacation in Hawaii, you write it off as a business expense because Ooh, that's your that's unit. Because <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're spilling visiting. all the secrets. <laughs> <laughs> you I call you, you go like, "Where are you? I'm in the Hawaii. I just called you like two weeks ago. You were still in Hawaii." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I think at this point of time, that's we're so cool. we're happy with uh, you know um, with the properties here, but. You know, we're, we are thinking about, like, where do we want to invest in next? And is it going to be Airbnb or is it going to be, you know, more of a long-term uh, yeah. tenant for us? Or maybe know. even out of country, in the country, in other countries, I was looking at that, too. Um, anytime we travel, I always look at opportunities and what's the market is yeah. there. Is it impossible to buy, like, an actual from here in the United States to buy, let's say, you go to Greece and stuff? Those yeah, are pretty. Okay. I was looking at some properties That's, there and it was not that bad. You can yeah. probably for half a mil, you can get yourself a pretty decent property and you can actually see the ocean. You just yeah. need to make sure you can finance it there. Well, I'm sure <laughs> if the you, numbers will If you're not, not buying it cash, if you're buying it cash, you can buy anywhere. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah. But if you're financing, yeah. I don't think we've looked uh, outside you know, the States, um, but we, we have looked at Hawaii. I mean, Hawaii is Maui. I feel like there's, there's a lot of um, opportunity there. Lake Tahoe, of course. I mean, Lake Tahoe is. Yeah, just, I'm looking for in Lake Tahoe myself. Yeah, kind of like yeah. a cabin, so we have. Yeah, yeah. We just got to be mindful just on of Nevada you know, side, regulations right? out there. <laughs> on Nevada side. <laughs> yeah, you just got to be mindful of regulations, right? Because yes. I, I think um, I haven't really looked at it. Have, have you looked at so different before, regulations? So before in uh, Lake Tahoe is very friendly. You could easily rent it out, have everything now. They're like, like, dude, like we have a lot of people coming in. 
and it's hitting the casinos, hitting the hotels. So they put in a place that you cannot have Airbnb unless you actually get a permit. Right. So like the houses, so you can even get a house, regular house, I feel like. Go get a permit, put it back on MLS, say, hey, this house comes with the permit, and probably sell it for 50K more. Really? Just oh. because it does have the permit that you're allowed to have. It. Uh -huh. So it's another niche that you can actually look into, like, hey, which, maybe even call the Lake Tahoe and say, hey, I wanna buy this, 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 which one can I have or not have the permit? Or you can have all of them. Make an offer, get the permits, put it back, says, hey, Airbnb ready. Uh -huh. Because some of them you can't even, you cannot because no HOA doesn't let yeah. you. Uh, it's just, it's, they're trying to protect the Tahoe to be a keep it blue, uh, keep it clean and mm -hmm. just. Which yeah. in a way I kind of support as well. You can't go and be let the whole Tahoe become the investment <laughs> for the short term <laughs> yeah. renters. So I understand where they're going with it, but yeah. Yeah. yeah, you so, need to do your research. And you know, so back to you know underwriting. If you're looking at um, you know Airbnbs, right? If you're buying Airbnbs, we always underwrite using long-term uh, uh, rent, right? So, what does the long-term rent uh, look like? What's On the average, pro forma? Two like K. Right. So, so we want to make sure that the long-term covers our mortgage. Well, how we, do you maneuver right now with interest rate being so high? Yes, the interest rate dropped to six and a half percent right mm -hmm. now. But yes. Two weeks ago, we were eight. Right, right. So, like, when you underwrite a deal, I mean, even if you buy, like you're saying, six hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollar duplex, or if you want to buy, you can't really find. Like, the payments are so it's high. It's getting harder. Mm -hmm. It's getting harder, but uh, also, but if you have the cash to put down to lower that, do that. You like know? the three, yeah. two, one buy down or the two, one buy down. Talking about. You can do that. You can finance it that way. That way. Uh, when the time I always say you marry the property you date the rate oh. so <laughs> so don't be afraid to buy with a higher rate because you can get a much better price point and then when rates drop you just refinance and you've got yourself a sweet deal gotcha. with a lower rate and a now lower payment as well what about something like arbitrage have you guys l tried experiencing that route yeah I mean we've we've heard a lot about it we personally didn't do that because most of our properties we own um, I feel like it's it's gonna be a it's it, it it's perfect for someone that wants to try Airbnb Experience, right yeah. and they want to see if it works for them without putting down a bunch of money and securing the property right yeah I would say it's yeah. a good way to get in and maybe it's, even it's make that cash in. flow yeah, yeah. To buy. but then you're missing out on a whole chunk of you know there's you know there's there's cash flow from rent but then there's also equity gain that you're missing out on yeah right you do miss a lot appreciation yeah, so, and depreciation right so you know in a lot yeah. in the last couple of years people made hundreds of thousands of dollars off of equity and then they probably made i don't know i mean let's say let's say you you made you know twenty thousand dollars of cash flow per year or thirty thousand on cash flow after debt service and everything i mean in three years you'd probably make sixty thousand dollars in cash flow but you lost on two hundred thousand dollars of equity wow. so there's two parts of it you that's why when we buy the deal, um, you know, number one, my probably number one advice is you just got to buy it right. You know, you have to buy it with, um, you know, if you buy it at the top of the market, of course, with, you know, high interest rates, you're probably not going to cash flow. You got to find um, a property that's under market value. And if you if you're handy, maybe put some work into it. Maybe look at two to three unit properties. Maybe look at single families with ADUs. Which is a good, that, good. Yeah, that second unit is going to help out a lot. You know, um, no matter if it's a small, like, little granny unit or if it's a, you know, legitimate, you know, second unit, whatever it may be, all of the properties that we look at, they have to have at least two units. Yes. We gotcha. don't even look at single family homes. They have to have two units. Because, you know, if rates are high, right, um, if you only have one unit, you can only get so much, right? If that tenant leaves... You lost your cash flow. If you have two units, if you even have a small unit that you can rent out for, you know, eight hundred bucks a month, thousand bucks a month, you know, and then your main house you can rent for another two, two, uh, you know, two and a half or three. There's your cash flow. You're gonna, you're gonna be cash flowing. Wow. If you buy it right, you but you got to have the second unit. Plus, sometimes the second units, if they don't have kitchen, then the financing is completely different for it. It's considered as a single family, so you pay. It, it's lower interest rate because it's only single family. Wow. And all you have to do is just put a little kitchenette in there and there's your unit. So. Wow. Do you do that after you get a finance? Just add a, add a kitchen? Yeah. 
That's so cool. Uh, well, yeah. You don't even, you can have your uh, microwave with a fan. All you have to do is just put the, <laughs> the um, uh, cooktop. Remove the cooktop, you get your appraisal. Wow. <laughs> Put the cook back. Cook, cook it's crazy how back. it works, right? Like, oh, yeah. just take it off. Put it back. Yeah, there's a there's a kind there's little <laughs> things that you have to know how to do. Yes, there's uh, little tricks. Yeah, and I've actually learned this trick from from a builder, new builds. They were doing it where in next gen or the different properties that have a separate unit attached to it like in-laws and they didn't have a kitchen like they have a kitchen but they didn't have the cooktop it goes as a single family they don't advertise it as a duplex because it doesn't sound good oh it's a yeah. duplex and yeah. a luxury sounds cheap yes right. which is ironic See? because <laughs> duplexes make you money but then right. they make it sound so cheap so they're like screwing you making yeah. you feel like it's <laughs> yeah. not a good idea yeah but that's day, a like, very good like, point <laughs> duplex is where you make the money See? like it should be rich duplex is rich single family cheap <laughs> exactly. Yes. You, you. Fact, I don't want you to succeed. In, in fact, but mobile you know homes, what? right? Another another asset class that people look at. Oh, mobile home. Like, but that's. I mean, if you look at the numbers on a mobile home, they're park, so cheap. Oh my gosh! I yeah. mean, but you can make. I mean, you can make. I mean, you can make a killing just by doing mobile home parks or just buying the mobile, mobile home park, not the mobile home. <laughs> Let's yeah, be. but you have to own the land. You got to own yeah, the land, right? Because right. then you can literally take it off, put a couple of pots, yeah, make a little fireplace in the middle. Rent the soccer <laughs> out, make it camp camp vibes and stuff like that. I know. And then just yeah. change it based of different like scenes. Glamping, and, glamping. Yeah, glamping. Yeah. And do people f love those kind of stuff. Oh, yeah. I yeah. feel like right now with the millennial generation, they just want to have something different, mm -hmm. something they never had before. And I feel like whoever provides that type of experience takes all the dough. Yes, yes. We if were he, just if, talking about it with Igor, uh, about that, that you have to make your property unique and stand out because, uh, as you know, we are, there's a lot of millennials. Everybody watched at some point some kind of HGTV show. You know, everybody knows, uh, a lot of people know Chip and Joanna Gaines. Those who don't uh, have the funds to, uh, to build or buy something like that, they want to experience it by going to Airbnb yeah. that looks like it. So that's, yeah, that's true. It's all Absolutely. about the experience yes. nowadays. Yeah, yeah. If you make it Instagrammable, right? You just gotta, <laughs> right. you know, some people come in, take some pictures, make, you know, and, and, and it's, you know, and if your place is unique, you're gonna get, you're gonna get bookings. You're gonna get, I mean, if you're going for short-term rentals. Yeah. I mean, we're talking about, you know, a, a, from short-term to long-term to medium-term. <laughs> we're term. jumping. Like, <laughs> Are we talking but, about all, everything has to do with investment real estate. Yes. Right. That's right. the yes. whole, because like investment real estate, it's not just one thing, buy right. and rent it. Mm -hmm. You can be so creative. Exactly. Like I've even seen people that they found out that the house for sale and it's a duplex uh -huh. and then they've had it in a trust, it's paid off. Mm -hmm. And then they say, hey, you know what? Like I would love to buy it. Everybody's offering you like 600K. I'll give you 625 because it's probably worth 900. But hey, I want you to finance it for me. That way you don't even need to come out of pocket anything because that person finances and you can say, hey, mm -hmm. within five years, I'll pay it off like a balloon payment. Mm -hmm. Then you can cash flow, collect the money. Oh, yes. Even and ask for like 24 months, zero, zero payments or even 12. Sometimes people desperate, they'll do that for you. Sometimes you can actually take their loan and make it yours. Basically, they give you their loan. Loan assumption. Yeah, yeah. loan assumption. Mm -hmm. How likely is it that happens a lot in uh, investment real estate when it comes into like duplexes, fourplexes? Triplexes. I mean, we. So personally, I've I haven't done one. Um, I know you know some of my colleagues have done that, and it works great. I mean, it it sounds good if you can find somebody who's in that position that needs to, you know, needs to get out of it. Then yeah, I mean, just you just gotta ask. You just you know yeah. if you. Because with that loan assumption, you're getting that lower rate that they had. Yeah. So it's it's a great. Yeah, I think way. it's gonna be more common. It, I, I mean, think if so If rates too. are gonna start going up, and if they'll stay up, yeah. I think we're gonna see more. It'll be of that. funny, like. The housing the house is worth, let's say, five hundred. They have a loan for like five fifty. Hey, mm -hmm. would you like to assume it for five fifty? <laughs> <laughs> negative Take 50, the difference. Negative fifty k. Because when you do assumption, uh, we actually I had a, a mortgage broker on. And he was kind of giving a little more insight when it comes to assumptions mm -hmm. and three ones buy down. Okay. Is when you assume a mortgage for three hundred grand, but you're buying a property four hundred grand, you will need to come out a hundred k out of pocket. Yeah. So right. sometimes like it's a good thing to ask because hey, what if you can assume mm -hmm. that 300, but then ask the gentleman or you know, the couple like, hey, would you finance that 100K difference mm -hmm. for me? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That way you technically have two loans, it's a little more riskier, but you can have zero out of pocket. 
Mm-hmm. Real yeah. estate is so, you can get so creative with real estate. And with just within the real estate investment, you can be so diversified too. Uh, don't, a lot of people think, oh, real estate is just one a uh, small not small it's a big um big uh part right that is like uh, you can do so many different things yes, in real estate i you mean really can. even with like you know um duplexes that's why we like you know smaller multi units you can you can diversify you can you can uh, maybe rent one out to a long term rent one out to a short term you can flip it you can um sell it buy something else there's so much there's so much there's like multiple exit strategies. When What's you the buy? best exit strategy you guys seen so far for you guys? It's like, when does it come to the point like when you and Yana's like, oh, we have to sell it? You know, we, so uh, it's funny because, uh, so I, you know, my first property I bought in 2015, I still have it. And uh, we, I, we haven't sold anything yet. <laughs> I think we if you buy anything like 2015 and 2010, 29, you keep. You don't want to like, sell. You don't want to yeah. sell that. Cause I mean, my tax base is so low, right? <laughs> I don't want to, you know, I'm going to. So even if I sell it, like, you know, I'm, I'm paying taxes. It, it's it's just dirt cheap. I'm not, I don't know if I'll ever sell that property. I'll probably hold it. So we're what we're actually doing right now is we're subdividing it. So I have half an acre in the back. So we're we're splitting it in three. And we're wow. planning to build some more homes and, I don't know, we'll either sell them maybe at that point or Airbnb them or long-term. I would long say term. the reason why we split two, because, yeah, if something happens, we can always sell one of them, still keep two, instead gotcha. of selling yeah. it all. What so. about, like, a lot of people doing, instead of selling and paying capital gains, they're just refinancing because in U.S., Debt is not taxed. Right. So cash out is great way to make money. <laughs> yeah, you do cash out. Re- I mean, that's so you know. That, going back to the birth strategy. Yes. Um, you know that's what you do. So you buy a property. You you put in the equity. You put in the money to let's say, you buy a property for uh, three hundred thousand. ARV is six hundred thousand. Right. So uh, you bought it at fifty percent ARV. You put in a hundred thousand dollars into it. Now, out of pocket, you're, I mean, it, it, you probably bought it using 20%, you know, down payment. So, you know, on a 300,000 property, that's what, 60, 60. 70,000? So, plus the $100,000 that you put in. So, so all in, you're at 160. Let's say the property, after you, refi- after you uh, uh, remodel it, let's say it appraises at 600. So, what you can do is you can pull out the 160 that you put in, you, put, you pull out all your money out. And then you can just go and reinvest it some other place. You don't have to sell the property. Wow. You keep the property. You just take the money that you put into the property. So you get the cash flow. Now you got to pretty but much. You, but then you cash flow at 460 then, right? Yes. Because you know right. that, hey, at 460, my loan yes. is going to be this That's a interest good point. rate. Mm-hmm. And then, okay, I'm paying two Even and a half. Even if, if, if you don't cash flow on that property, but it pays for itself, it's a property that you got for free because you took all the money out of it. Gotcha. And you Yours, use it for another yeah. one. As, yeah, because you, you pulled out all your money, even if it cash flow 50 bucks. You know, okay, it's well, wow. you, you got the property for free. So we don't have to sell them. We, we, we don't want to sell them. We just take the equity out and we just buy more properties. Would it be like a conventional loan? Or are you talking about more like a conventional? What about the DSCR loans? That could be Those another one. Those are the one. ones that they don't mm-hmm. even go. Because I've done two from our rentals. And I never provided my tax return. They strictly went based off the, the rental income. income. They look exactly. like they, they do them almost like commercial. So they look how much the unit is producing. And based on that income, they give you your loan. Wow. Well, I mean, you just got to price them correctly, right? When you go to your mortgage broker, just have them price, uh, you know, that loan versus, uh, you know, a regular cash out refi loan or whatever kind of loan. Look at the loan estimate. Look at the closing costs. And uh, I mean, if, when you have it all in front of you, then you, it's easy to make the decision yes. which route do you want to go. I feel like if you're saying if you're getting fifty percent value of the rental, I think it's still an amazing because you're getting fifty percent. I mean, even starts an A when the house market dipped, it did not dip fifty percent. Mm-hmm. I mean, so like it's in a way, it's like a recession proof. If you can buy right, right now a house that's fifty right. percent, a current value of fifty percent, that's a crazy deal. Th- that's why I'm saying it. Those deals are hard to come by. But, um, you know, you just have to, you guys run across these type of deals all the time, I'm, mostly I'm sure. Mostly single family. But mostly, you can, that, yeah. that's, that's our niche, that's what we focus on. We mm-hmm. buy properties, we make them great again. Yes. Right, that's <laughs> what we do. You can definitely do. So you make can, the properties great again. Yes. <laughs> you call Paul, because I'm going to buy them all. 
<laughs> like, Woo, I like from, those like, slogans. You know, from Breaking, from Bre- Breaking Bad, <laughs> yeah, better call Saul, better call Paul. <laughs> yeah, you got to get one of those red hats and you gotta put that on your hat. <laughs> I should have got it. And the shirt from Breaking Bad. I know, I know. <laughs> what are we cooking today? <laughs> <laughs> Two deals, three deals. <laughs> and I mean, you can definitely do that with single family homes. Don't get me wrong. You you're just not going to cash flow as much yeah. um, as you would on a, on a two unit. But, I mean, and your risk is a little bit higher because if your tenant doesn't pay, very rarely do you, not, not very, but yeah, I would say very rarely you have two tenants that don't pay. Usually just one doesn't pay, one still pays. It's still you have something, some sort of com- balance. Some, some sort of yeah. balance. With yeah. a single family, mm-hmm. you don't have that luxury. You have nothing. They don't yeah. pay, you're out of luck. Yeah, pretty much. But I mean, you can definitely do that. Those deals are harder to come by, but I think... If you have a good um, investor-friendly agent in your market, um, you're gonna find that deal sooner or later. You just how gotta- do you find those those agents that specialize? Like, if someone's Igor. watching, they're like, you know what? My <laughs> goal, guy. my goal is obviously <laughs> we'll put his information on. Definitely reach out to Igor. He will help you get investment. You you probably ever have a right now a duplex you came across, right? That is available to buy. Yeah, I just showed one this morning right before I came let's here. Talk, <laughs> let, let's talk about it. Well, what's so special about the deal? What are they asking? Where is it at? So uh, so this deal is in uh, in Rancho Cordova. It's actually down the street from where I used to live. No way. So I, I knew a family that lived in that duplex. And it, it, it came up on, on the market. The way it was listed was wrong. So, you know, that's another thing. If it's listed wrong in the wrong like category... It's not going to get a lot of views. So that's a good thing, for, for right? It's a good buy. thing for the buyer. We look right. for that always. So it's yeah. it's some some out of state agent that's selling the deal. He didn't put it in the right place. Like it's a residential income unit, and he put it in a single family wow. with one address. So it pops up as a single family home, but it's overpriced. really a duplex. <laughs> yeah, it's an overpriced home, but it's underpriced duplex. <laughs> so so I mean that immediately caught my eye, and I had you know I have um, you know this guy that's specifically looking for you know two unit properties, and uh, yeah I mean he he saw it. He's like oh yeah dude let's let's go take a look at it. Let's make an offer and. Uh, we're probably going to make an offer today. Hopefully, yeah. we don't get out- outbid. And it sounds like, oh my God, I have such an amazing agent sold my property within a day or two. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, but it was sold. just, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it's. Um, it's important when your uh, realtor knows the uh, duplex market. It's really important to yes. for for your for whoever you're working with to know the market to know what's available because if you monitor, you know exactly what just came out and what's been sitting there for mm-hmm. a year. So yeah. pretty much, guys, if you are looking to sell, if you might have, you if you're watching out of state, maybe from Florida, Texas, and you have a duplex, fourplex here in Sacramento, definitely reach out to a real estate agent who actually has experience selling investment real estate because they will net you more money in your pocket compared to somebody like you know your cousin or somebody who might have a license <laughs> who will just put it and That's then a good point, would yeah. lose yeah. at least 50K for you. So just be very cautious when it comes to that. Exactly. Because it's a two yeah. different plates. It's I mean, a different, yeah, it's a different market. You're talking about different clients. You're talking about different buyer. Uh, it's not going to be most most duplex um, you know purchases are sold to investors or somebody who's planning to either house hack it or somebody who's planning to maybe live on one side for a year and move out. You're not you're they're not typically your you know young families with three children. Those, or like they're not emotionally attached to the. Yeah, property. those are the they people don't. that are not emotionally attached. Those are more investors. So you're you're catering to a different type of buyer. You know how to se- you have to know how to sell those. Uh, if you're selling them, um, or you, if you're on the buy side, uh, you have to know you the know, numbers the, too. The numbers, <laughs> so you can negotiate it better, so you can you know either get the price down or, or I mean, out of I'd say you know out of, let's say a hundred duplexes on the market right now, there's probably maybe two good deals. Wow. Everything else is I wouldn't even look at. Wow. So I mean, it's just there, a lot of them are not good deals, but you wouldn't know that if you if you're not specializing in duplexes. You don't know what to look for. So, so what's the top three things that if somebody does want to look at, like say your hundreds, because such a small percentage, like what's the, th- the three things that you'd say, I would not be- get this deal, no matter what they're asking? So location, I mean, location's number one, right? There's a couple different things that I look at. Um, uh, if it's on a busy street, uh, where is it located? Is it surrounded by other duplexes? Okay. Most duplexes are, uh, uh, you know, on the street that zone duplexes, they're not going to be surrounded by single family homes. Typically. Yeah, but if it's like, let's say, to the main street, like, why would you care that it's backs up to the main street? Because you're not going to live and you're going to rent it. Someone's going to pay. Your tenant will care. 
Yeah, so <laughs> so your tenant, right? So yeah. ultimately, you base it off your potential cash flow. Um, so the the more people it can attract, the 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 higher you can ask for that unit, right? So if if it's on a busy street, you're probably not going to get as many applicants. Um, you know, especially with small children, or if they have dogs, they don't want to live on a busy street, right? They're going to look at you know family you know friendly areas where you can play on the street and play basketball or whatever so that's important the other thing is um if it's zoned like for me you know i look at if it's surrounded by single family homes um you know if 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 so you're gonna have less traffic you're gonna have less parking less cars on the street um those those people typically take care of their homes they you know water the lawn they they keep up with the landscaping if you're surrounded by other duplexes which a lot of them are renters they're not going to be the most desirable yeah Yeah. but how how likely i mean i only i think that if you're a builder back in the days and you're building duplexes like you would build like a subdivision like maybe like 30 40 duplexes in a row how likely do you see a duplex that is like single family single family duplex single family single family they the, so it's, probably uh, it's, rare, not, right? it's not likely it, the, so the one i showed today is is one of those where it's surrounded by single family homes so it's not like it's just it's it's there's it's you know just little things like that you know it's not there's no one single factor that you should look for or you shouldn't look for there's just a bunch of little ones you know that like, make a big difference yeah that yeah. over time they make a big the, the location where it's located um the layout, uh, the size of the backyard. Does it have a garage? Uh, does it have a one car, two car garage? Does it have one bath or two baths? Um, you know, just little things like that. The age of the HVAC unit, the, you know, the AC, so windows. I mean, there's just a ton of little factors that um, it might be on a good street, but it's you know, it's um, you know, it's got foundation problems. You <laughs> know, so, yeah, yeah. so you got to look at everything. Or it might have current tenant problems too. Yeah. So you that's another be- big one. So if you have, you know, tenants, in, especially in California, right? Yeah. You I mean, to- the, the laws are so crazy. Yeah. So if you have a, you know, a long-term tenant that uh, you, you go, you, you go take a look at the duplex and they just won't let you in to see the duplex. You don't mind. They're like, okay, so, you know, you got to count, you know, another three months for, you know, eviction <laughs> for eviction. I think at least three. I mean, that's six at least, months. At least three months. Yeah. Yeah, I think six months. We had some that we couldn't evict because with the whole restrictions I had for the playing off since 2020, it's just. Mm-hmm. I would always say it's if insane. you buy a duplex, it's always important to have uh, uh, money saved in the account, especially for that duplex. They can cover like I each property that we have, I have up to six months of reserves for that property. So even if. God forbid something happens, somebody doesn't pay. I have money aside just for that property. That's smart. Yes, yes. You got to have that. Have some reserves. And, and of course, with duplexes, right, you have, um, you know, more um, HVAC units, right? <laughs> you have two kitchens. You have uh, two, uh, two of everything, basically. Yeah. <laughs> so two refrigerators, <laughs> two dishwashers. It's like double so, expense, yeah. so you have it's, double, it's the double the expense. Yeah, was, uh, Grant Cardone, I was, I was listening to his podcast, he was, and he had like a seminar, and he's like, who loves real estate? Raise your hand. Everybody was like, who has money in, in your account? Everybody picked up like, I guess you don't love real estate as much as I do because I got nothing. <laughs> you know, because he's like, if you yeah. love real estate as much as I do, you should not have money in your account. You should be buying deals. <laughs> I understand where he's coming from, but uh, I always think that you he's more of a like, make it or break it. You know, I'm gonna make he's it. Going in he's going all no, in. He's almost a billion around. dollars worth of real 10X, estate. Which 10X, is, yeah. 10X. 10X, yeah. yes. So, is that what you guys, what, what's your guys' goal? Like you have what, 13, 15, you're gonna try to get to 10X, 150 units, let's it's go. It's funny, three years years ago when we just talked about it we said that we will be good with 12 and <laughs> 15 i think oh, yeah i think 15? we should we said 12, 12 we said yeah. 12 and we we kind of based it off like long-term you know rents what long-term rents could generate yeah. for us and we thought okay if we get to 12 that we would be would be fine so now that we started doing Airbnb, we're like, man, we didn't, you know, when we underwrote those deals, we didn't factor in, you know, short term. The numbers yeah. look much better now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's why, that's why I'm saying when you do that, when you underwrite a deal, don't underwrite it based on str income i mean what if something happens what if you know a new regulation comes out or or even covid when covid happened yeah. for a lot of uh properties that are in certain locations they got dead yeah it just wiped them out for you know a couple of weeks but then people started booking again but so uh, but uh, you know if you underwrite it using you know more conservative uh, underwriting guidelines you know your, your long-term tenant 
and not you know don't go off the the highest possible performa you know go conservative if if those numbers still make sense then yeah i mean you you, you should be you should be solid so that's what, that's kind of what we did so but when we started, I mean, we didn't even think about short-term rentals. And now that we're starting yeah, to do it, it's just... got popular, just, like 2020, 20, people yeah. wanted to get out. Like, like, okay, we're open, we're live, we can go. They just yeah. wanted to experience something. Yeah, yeah. And but, I mean, there are just so many of them right now. So I much. just pulled up uh, the, uh, I think there's like hundreds around the downtown property that we have. There's probably hundreds of yeah. them. So you got to make sure you stand out. This is sure. what, what I love the most when it comes to sales is don't sell a product, sell the experience. So exactly. when you sell experience, the product goes with it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Which is kind of cool because even if like going back to the rental, I think a lot of people, misconception is like, oh my God, like so much debt, debt is bad, you got to keep it. But back in the days when our parents, you know, were able to buy a house, they're buying for like a hundred grand, 50 grand. You could easily pay that off in like a couple of years if you work. Nowadays, the pressure is so high due to inflation that it's like, that is good if it's underwritten in the correct way with exactly. like measurements of precautions because a lot of people like baby boomers and even like our generation millennials they're looking okay what i'm going to retire i'm going to have social security i was like dude right. like you're not going to have your social security that like, social security will be pennies yeah, by the time you retire social security <laughs> was not designed for yeah. so many people there is designed for like small percentage but because there's so many people. I think we're reaching soon. We're like, I'm not sure 100, percent but I think it was eight. Yeah, I've, I've read that on the news the other day. It was like we reached eight billion people. Eight billion people, yeah, right? I think so we like, already have. And mm -hmm. we're not putting so much in Social Security, so eventually it's gonna dry. It, it's gonna happen. I mean, it's like a it's like a well. Eventually it dries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It dries. yeah. But I feel like if you know for a fact, okay, like, hmm, I am 20 years old. I'm 30 years old. I'm gonna retire when I'm 65, 70. How much money do I want to have when I retire? 20k, 30k. What's a good amount? to live on per well, month 10k well, a month yeah you would think right I mean, now right but now, by the time you're right, 60 okay, let's say 20k a month mm -hmm. so okay. like if it's 20k a month and then if i buy a piece of real estate in 30 years that the house is paid off and let's say if i even can rent it for a thousand dollars a month i just need 20 run rental properties exactly that's where Bingo. we're going with it so Bingo. then like hey in 30 years i'm i can still work but i'm financially free and that's mm -hmm. the goal in life is mm -hmm. for you not to that you don't have to go and clock in, mm -hmm. that you clock in because you want to, not because you need to. Right. See yeah. what I'm saying? It's a completely mm -hmm. different approach to life. So that's what yeah. I'm like, okay, how much money do I want when I retire? 100K, okay, I gotta get 100 units. Right, right. A month. Right. You know, right. like that way when I'm 65, 70, I don't have to worry about mm -hmm. it, I can put it into a trust, and then it's generational mm -hmm. wealth, it passes on yeah. and takes care of everybody and yes. don't forget that with time rents go up too so whatever is your rent if, it, if your rent is you're making a thousand dollars uh within few like for us we got lucky we thought we have one uh rental property that we're gonna make about a thousand bucks on but then rents went up so high that we're making two That's okay, awesome. so we pretty much doubled <laughs> our expected you know cash flow off a long-term deal too and then and yeah yeah and it's hard to put a number so like you know us in our 30s right yeah we don't i mean i can say you know i'll be happy with you know an x amount of dollars when i'm 65 but how do we know that that number would be enough at 60 what if you know with the inflation and everything 10 grand a month is going to be like you know like nothing. four it's going to be like <laughs> you know, what, what's the cost because slide 10 <laughs> you know what just take down the cookie i don't want those cookies uh okay it'll be nine thousand. Yeah. yeah so i mean the the currency and everything but you know real estate is tangible you can set if you're if you're running short on cash and you have a couple properties when you're 65 you can sell one for the currency that that's going to be at that time it might be bitcoin who knows <laughs> yeah you, know, you can sell it for a few bitcoins and then use that money to reinvest and or do whatever you want with that money so uh, i think yeah having real estate is uh is the key you know to financial freedom yeah. for sure speaking of uh Bitcoin and crypto, we're actually listing a property in Sacramento. And then when you go, like, what type of finances you're looking for? And you, know, you put cash, convention, it's like cryptocurrency. I'm like, ah, oh, look, it's there. MLS takes it. Uh, so, like, how ready? so what type of, uh, I mean, what do you take? Bitcoin, Ethereum, or? I'm, I mean, in this, case, in this case, I'll probably go with something with, like, a high market cap. I would not take Doge. <laughs> <laughs> Just too but I'll probably take, like, Biddy, maybe even ETH, but nothing, like, and again, like it's so volatile. I mean, like, 
Yeah, yeah. You don't hear anybody talk about uh, <laughs> crypto. Crypto, it's got <laughs> quiet now. <laughs> all the all the experts are just kind of like, okay, you yeah, know, it's been a lot of going back uh, to a lot. It's been going down a lot. Also, but you mentioned about that, like debt is bad. It also depends who you listen to. If you listen to Dave Ramsey, of course, debt is bad, and you gotta pay everything <laughs> off, and that's the only way to live. Yeah, you, it slows you down so much. You gotta listen to Robert Kiyosaki. He's talking <laughs> debt all the time. I think Dave Ramsey, what he's preaching is because he got burned before mm -hmm. and uh, he just had really risky loans when it comes to hard money even though he was good and he kept up with his payments the banks called the notes like we don't care we need the money and that's why he got burned yeah he, even though he was paying everything yeah uh, I can, I can and, he, and Dave Ramsey is pushing more like a God's principles when it comes to finances like that is that is not good because you can be slave to the lender in a way you are because you're making payments and to build generational and a compound interest when you get money every single month it adds up then yes but if you're trying to speed up and you yeah. know what you're doing in this environment then that is good it's just you cannot exceed the risk to parameters like what the non-negotiable because yeah. if you over leverage yourself like you're screwed like eventually it will pop But yeah. if you're safe and you understand and you are and you do have, like you're saying, six months worth of reserve for every, every single home, I feel like even if you lose a job tomorrow, you're going to find a job yeah. in six months. Come exactly. On. That's, It's that's not that the complicated. Point. Yeah. Like you can go flip burgers at McDonald's and yeah. still make 20 bucks an you hour. You have to be financially educated before you get yourself into debts. Yeah, and you just got to know what property you're buying. I mean, it's... It's uh, Dave Ramsey might work for you know some people, right? Some people are better off listening to. It's you know, really Dave good Ramsey. for people who have a lot of debt, and yeah. they're just like, yeah. I don't know what to do, and then yeah. he just step by step process, mm -hmm. which is amazing. But if you like, like you know, you guys went through education, you were in real estate for so long, and mm -hmm. you understand the the principle of money when it comes mm -hmm. in, how to invest it, because not a lot of but people, because even the school doesn't teach us about the money. They don't really they want don't. us so it's like, <laughs> to know about it. You have yeah. to find, <clears throat> this is why I feel like it's so important to socialize yourself with successful people when it comes right. in and what sphere they're in. And it's even important to have a mentor when it comes to that because if you can find somebody who is at the level that you're trying to reach and they're already there, well, guess what? They already got there. Mm -hmm. So if you either pay to be their mentor or you're just trying to intern for them because you want to get closer to the light, I think it's it's amazing if you can get in because exactly. people already done that. Just mm -hmm. copy what successful people did, but don't copy the mistakes. Copy the success. Right. And you're, you're make the it. average of five, right, of the people you hang out yeah. with. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. So no, no, you're you're 100. You're 100 right about that. And uh, you know, I, I feel like you know the more successful you get, the more you attract. You know, the, more those haters come. <laughs> yeah, and that too. And then you surround yourself by with other investors, and and then you start running across more properties, and then you yeah. you you run across different ideas, and and yeah. you know now we're talking about you know a scaling up to like larger multi units. So let's talk about the apartments. Come <laughs> on, If you actually hit it right on the head because your net work is your net worth. Exactly. Yes. So like, mm -hmm. if you hang out with the billionaire. Well, guess what? You will get to a millionaire. Exactly. <laughs> you know what I mean? like, it's much easier to it's get. It's much yeah. easier because they, they think differently. Their mindset differently. Their um, inspiration. Even their like attitude towards money. Because a lot of people who are successful, they're givers. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Like I've met, never met anybody who is uh, not like whoever's not who's successful, but they're not a giver. Mm -hmm. A lot of people like because you're not tied to that. Mm -hmm. And that's how the money works. Like you gotta like pass it on. Like all the people out there, like even right now in society, who they they donate, they help people, they provide value. You know, yes. they they do a lot of stuff that they usually normally don't get paid because there's different ways you can give with money. But I feel like time you can is give the with experience yeah. too. Because yeah. time is the currency sure. of life, and I feel like even if you donate with your time. Exactly. That's another way of blessing somebody out there. And then that goes back to you because you're like, wow, you're providing value for exactly. somebody out there, which is pretty cool. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. surround yourself with five people, you'll be the average of them. So can we find, hey, if you're a billionaire, <laughs> <a> comment, <laughs> let's get lunch. If, if, if you're a billionaire looking at how to invest into duplexes. <laughs> no, we'll, we're, we're just a little longer, we'll get to the multifamilies when it comes into like apartments, we'll get there. <laughs> yeah, right now we're focusing on the smaller, <clears throat> the smaller scale. But what and about you know, apartments? When is the next, two, uh, when are you guys planning to get into like an apartment? I, you know, you know, one thing I realized with, uh, 
you know, that's the next step. You know, we're, we're, that's probably going to be the next step. But for for somebody who's just getting started, right? For somebody who's, I don't know, I bought my first property when I was 25. And at the time, I was just thinking, you know, I want to live for free, basically. I want to I wanna get a two-unit. Even when I was 25, I was looking at uh, duplexes. And, you know, a lot of people just live, you know, probably 50% of the income goes towards housing expense, right? Wow. So I wanted to eliminate that. So I, I thought to myself, if I can find a tenant who's going to pay off my mortgage and I can just, you know, the money that I have saved, I'm yeah, going to use retiring. it. I'm <laughs> retiring. Yeah, I, you know, I thought, I, I thought that was going to be my, you know, my life. But, you know, once you get one property, you're like, man, this actually works. You want to get a second property and then a third one. And then, get addicted. And then it kind of, it kind of snowballs you from really there. You dead. get addicted, yes. So, and then if you buy a couple properties right, if, you know, if you underwrite them correctly, if you get a couple properties, you really don't need an apartment to live comfortably. All you need is three duplexes that are paid off. Wow. Like four duplexes. You you don't need a 50-unit apartment complex. You don't need to go syndicate. Or, I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, there are people that make millions. I mean, if you want to build like a massive portfolio, I mean, like if you're doing the Grand Cardone, the 10X, yes. like yeah. 100%. Yeah. But like, I feel like still... To if you find like a thirty-two unit apartment, it's a lot of money out of pocket. Like, I feel like you do when you get in an opportunity to like, for example, if you find a deal, and it's an apartment complex. Like, I have a construction team, right? I could renovate it probably cheaper than anyone else can. Yeah. I got in-house. I got everything: plumber, electrician. I mean, you name it. Mm -hmm. So like, I feel like when you surround yourself with people, and then you're really good at finding deals. Somebody's really good at renovating. This guy, perfect. I mean, uh, an organization putting. You could put a team together and go out there and say, hey, our goal in the next two years is just get like a thousand doors. Like, what's the way of getting it? Are we getting a hundred in an apartment or we're we just going straight for the big daddy one? Well, straight I mean, to a thousand. Yeah. I mean, but I feel like number of doors is just so kind of misleading, right? I mean, so I listen to a lot of podcasts and people are, especially mid Midwest, are saying, oh, you know, I have this 50 unit deal <laughs> and I'm cash flowing. And then they get to cash flow, they're like, and I'm cash flowing like, you know, a thousand bucks a month. <laughs> like how? <laughs> how are you cash flowing a thousand bucks a month on fifty units? Because their their cash flow is like fifty bucks a door, you know, oh. or they're over leveraged, or or just you know, there's barely any rent growth, or who knows what the case is. But here, I mean, <laughs> we're cash flowing, you know, three times that on the one single property. So it's not. I I don't think it's the amount of doors that you should go for. It's the it's the overall like net in your pocket, like the cash flow. Yeah, how the much cash flow. flow how much cash generate? flow do you need? If you need, and how much say, headache is it? It's like managing. It does take a lot of. Yeah. it does take, especially with Airbnbs. Like we right. had our own horror stories too. I mean, people would throw in some parties there. Then, oh man, dude, like, yeah, yeah. But it's <laughs> I know not, it's, it's crazy. <laughs> it's rare, but it happens. It's we, part of the business, unfortunately. Yeah, but we protect but ourselves now. We're like, okay, minimum two day stay. We started high, doing that. Yeah. High cleaning fee. Like, you know, we do all that. Like, if you have no reviews, we're not going to do it. Yeah. So we do kind of like we learned from our mistakes. Yeah. But still, like, it's... You got to yeah. screen. Screen, screen your yeah. guests. And you know, yeah. the other thing is that a lot of people don't talk about is single room occupancy for Airbnb. So me and Yana tried it, you know, a couple of years back. When at, we at just getting property. into yeah. uh, Airbnb business. Yeah. We just kind of wanted to see how it works for us. You know, we've heard horror stories. We've heard other people talk about it, but we just kind of wanted to experience it for ourselves. So we um, we posted one of the bedrooms on Airbnb for like a month, and man, it was it was <laughs> it, I mean, it was nice. We liked it. First of all, the tenant, same house that you lived yeah. in, you rented. We tried it. it yeah. was, I, I had to overcome. Bedroom or yeah, no, we, no, stayed, we yeah. stayed in the master. <laughs> but the <cash laughs> a lot of people flow, were thinking we're crazy because it was like you letting somebody else and who's stranger. Yeah, complete some, stranger. I mean, so we traveled a lot, right? We go to Europe. We traveled to. That's a good idea. You know, I mean, and so a lot of places that we stayed at, we were the ones, you know, staying in somebody else's house. Like some places don't allow. Um, entire place rentals you can only get a room wow and so. the reason why we do it also we do like to uh, experience when we go out of country to experience the authentic uh, living how do people of that country live and the best way to try it is actually to go into Airbnb and live with them so yeah. like we rented like one in a ranch that is an old ranch wow. so you go in the morning you pick your eggs from the farm and it's really yeah. cool it's a completely you different want, you way want to some travel. milk you yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, didn't so. get to that <laughs> we, we were on the I've other side of it I've done that in Ukraine because I was it's born awesome. in Ukraine I've done that it's there you cool. go I yeah. did too <laughs> so we house. had some amazing experiences staying in somebody's house you know through Airbnb and we thought 
you know, why don't we do it here? And so when we've done it, first of all, you're clean. You pocket 100% of your cleaning fees, right? That's so, fire. so let's say you charge, you know, 50 bucks, 100 bucks cleaning fee. Well, it's in your house. It's in your room. Yeah, you can the just room go was going to clean it for you. Yes. <laughs> exactly. So you, you pocket that. So, well, you know, one thing with Airbnbs is that you're, um, you know, when you, you un underwrite the deal, right, you have to account for cleaning fees, especially if the, if the property, if you don't live at the property, it's like an hour away from you. Who's going to clean it? So if you find a cleaner and the cleaner will charge you 100 bucks, you know, if you have 20 stays, that's $2,000 a month that you have to account for. Wow. That's just a nice think about that. business. <laughs> think about that. So, so uh, you know, you're yes. I mean, you're charging. You're, you're somebody's making two thousand bucks, and if if it's right next to you, if you're if you have the time to clean it, that could be your additional income in addition to wow. the fee that you yeah. charge per room. That's one thing that I noticed that with single room, um, you know. It, it doesn't get talked about a lot, but I think it's cool. It's a good way to start for those who own basically a single family and want to try what Airbnb is like and heard all the horror stories. If you're uh, okay, if you're okay with risking it in a way, if you're okay with meeting new people, you just screen them because if it's your own home, you can ask questions. Yeah. You can see them. You ask They're them questions. But that's, They're I, not going to throw uh, a party while you're in the home. I love yeah. that. To get in for the first time, just rent out one of your bedrooms one, just to see bedroom. how it is. Yeah. Look online, see how much people rent it. Just, but would you rent like for the whole like whole fam bam that comes in like, with it, kids, or is it just one person? Usually, yeah. Uh, uh, what if like two you have people, a, two, a couple two. comes in with like five kids? No. Where's that room? <laughs> <laughs> well, no. I mean, so you have you have a queen. Let's say you have a queen bed. You know, so you can only and you're you're really strict in your house rules. You're saying, you know, no pets allowed, no smoking, no obviously partying nobody's gonna party while you're um, there <laughs> and, breakfast uh, included <laughs> we didn't do breakfast so no. you can and that's gonna be an additional source of revenue right if you do you that can. you can sell them like chef you can, yana in the house <laughs> you can say you, I, can, I can cook so. breakfast yeah. for like you know 10 bucks you know whatever <laughs> or you can even pick them up from the airport you know offer that service that's yeah. pretty cool. I mean, it, yeah. there's a, so many ways you can make money. It's there's crazy. so many ways, and, and just it's just you gotta pick one. It's not what you pick. It's 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 you just gotta pick one, and that's and it. Do you want to do? You, you need to do it. Yeah. You don't have to like even buy a property to do Airbnb. You can, you know, even if you're renting, a, do rent arbitrage. I mean, that works. Yeah, you can or if you have a property it. and you don't have enough money to buy a second property, rent out yeah. a part of your own house. And the uh, arbitrage rental w with uh, Igor means is that when you find a property in a desired area and there's a rental out there, you rent it to yourself, but you have to make sure that the, the person who rents you is okay yes. with exactly. uh, renting it as an Airbnb. So then if you are paying 2K and then you are renting it out through Airbnb comes out three, you pocket that 1,000, by doing it, you don't really ha you don't have the mortgage expense because you're renting it, but the person who gave you the lease has to be okay exactly. with short-term rentals mm -hmm. yes. because if you're not doing it, you, there could be a lot of litigations, a lot of stuff. No, you need to obviously talk it out and make yeah. sure that you're. But that's a good way if you don't want to if you can't even afford buying anything. Yeah. yeah, yeah. If you have a single family home, you or you have an extra bedroom in your house and you're short on cash, you're like, hey. You know, I want to start. Shed in the back. I want to. Yes, yeah. I, I want to start investing. Do that. That will be your start. mini home. Want to experience know? how people live in Rosa Road here? <laughs> a shed in the back. <laughs> yeah, just make it a tiny home. Make it Instagramable. Paint it. <laughs> put it make it nice. Yeah. Put then, a little flower. And some then people rent their, their elf house, RVs, elf house, right? Buy on like yeah, RVs. Buy like yeah. an elf, put it like an elf house. Uh, give them a costume. Put this on before you get in. <laughs> a full experience for four ninety nine. <laughs> if you want to feel like an elf, <laughs> this is the way. Tiny right? home, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty cool. Yeah, and 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 so there's demand for that too. I mean, there's people that are just driving. We thought, you know, who's gonna rent a bedroom in our house? Like, like in it's Sacramento. It's a nice house, it's but not, <laughs> we're not in Hawaii. We're not no. like in Greece. <laughs> it's Sacramento. There's really, but I mean, we had you know people that are driving from Washington to L.A. and they just needed a place to crash for a night. So it's cheaper than a hotel a lot of times because of the cleaning fee. Your cleaning fee is so low that it just it's it's within mo a lot of people's budget. Right. And I actually made a couple friends that way. Uh, the, uh, yeah. they, they just came, they, they were our guests, and we stayed in contact. And now, like, oh, if we're going to, now they know that the house is rented fully. They're like, oh, I saw your house is fully rented. And like, that's awesome. Oh, that's yeah, so, we'll still keep in touch. I mean, one, one lady lives in like Oregon or something. Yeah, yeah she was visiting yeah. her family in LA. But there's like, so hey, many ways. You lived yeah. in my house. I'm going to go live in your house. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. My favorite thing about like the rental uh, market is that you don't have to have a real estate license to get in. 
which exactly. is pretty fire. A lot of people have misconception that you got to have a real estate license to become an investor, but you don't. Like me personally, I don't have a real estate license. And but so you don't? No, I don't. I always thought you did. No, never. I don't oh, that's have. right. Okay, okay. Yeah, because because no. uh, you you work with uh, you work with investor friendly realtors, right? Yes, that look for these yes. deals. All and, the deals okay. that we buy because it's all about the blessing too. Like I get it. I can go easily probably get my risk license, make the two and a half percent, but then I don't get to meet so many uh, smart people out there. Like I would not be able to meet you. Why we'll not? probably be competitors. Be- because uh, <laughs> because uh, he, was a, he was the one that brought me a couple of deals. Ah, and okay. I, I, I wouldn't be able to write up myself. Now I have a relationship. I have friendship yeah. built and I know somebody. So I feel like yeah, the two and a half, two and a half percent is it might be oh my god. Oh, people, it's not always. Then, it's not even always. It's that. not always, and but then <laughs> you get to build people. You get to build you know successful agents out there, and if everybody knows that hey, this guy buys houses in a fixer condition, and he's still here when the when we're in the recession, which he's still mm-hmm. here when rates are higher. Whenever they'll bring to me, and then that I'd be able to build that relationship, which is pretty cool. So yeah. like I just don't see for me personally a value in having a real estate license because even if I have somebody reach out to me, hey, I want to sell my house, I'm like, hey, reach out to this guy and I'll reach out to this girl or because they bring me the value, they bring me the deal, so I get to pass it on and yeah. they're like, wow, thank you for referring. I'm like, hey, thank you for taking care of yeah. me yeah. because later on, whenever there's going to be a really good deal when it comes in a fourplex, even a multi-unit opportunity, mm-hmm. well, guess who they're going to call? You. Yeah. Exactly. It's also, yeah. I always say it's important to hire an expert in 100%. the area because a lot of people, they sit down and they start counting how much you will make, not thinking how much value you provide and how much you're exactly. saving of your nerves, <laughs> of your money and everything. So it's always important to find an expert in that area that you are wanted to grow in and not be afraid to pay them because they will provide you way more value and it will be much quicker versus yeah. you going and doing it all yourself. It's not mistake. how, it's who sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> it's who you know, it's not how you know them. Yeah, yeah it's just don't, <laughs> don't even, it doesn't, you don't have to learn how to do it. Just find somebody who knows, who already knows how to do it. You know, somebody who's an expert. It could be like a big one, a CPA. Like, don't go cheap on your CPA. On your taxes, you yes. You know, your, yeah, on your accountant. I mean, a lot of people make the mistake of, you know, hiring the cheapest, you know, $40 an hour CPA. I mean, there's so much money you're leaving on the table. It's, it's crazy. Because they don't know anything. They don't have time yeah, to They invest. don't have time to explain it yeah. to you. And, and, and like taxes, it's, I mean, if you think about it, how much taxes you're actually spending, um, you know, uh, off your from your income, whether it's a flip, whether it's a rental, uh, there's so many things that you can deduct uh, dedu- legal legally. Like it's not you know it's not you're not cheating. It's it's legally that you don't know. Uh, so if you go to somebody who doesn't know what they're doing, or somebody who's in a rush and charges forty bucks, they don't care. I mean, you're doing yourself a disservice. Yes. So same thing applies to. You know, anybody, I mean, realtors, uh, loan officers, uh, you know, property managers, uh, you know, flippers, investors. So. So uh, let me ask you this, like if tomorrow you wake up, everything's gone. Your net worth is zero, but you have all your knowledge. How would you rebuild it back? What would be the first step you would do? Uh, Because most of yours don't have Do I still have have the job or no? You still have your license, but you don't have any rentals. You don't have nothing. Let's yeah. say you have 25K in your account because I'm pretty confident people watching, they have some kind of nest mm-hmm. egg, maybe in 401K, maybe they can even go borrow from their parents. Uh, if, if, if they can, Yes, if they you want can to. use gift funds if you plan to live in that pro- investment property. You yeah. can use gift funds for your home. Yeah, so what I mean, would you do? How would you rebuild your empire? If, if you have, so if, if you have a job, because that number one, get a job, right? <laughs> <laughs> so you can get financing. Can do anything yes. if you don't have a job. Yeah, you got to have. Nine, you, nine so if you have an income, right, uh, preferably stable income, if you're, you know, uh, working for a corporation and, you know, you have W-2, uh, make sure you, you're, you know, you stay consistent. Work you have at, at least, least two years, years of employment history. Don't that's be jumping, you know. But so if all that, if we put all that aside, if that's there, I would start with a two-unit property. I would st- probably do the same thing I've done, you know, in 2015. I would find a property that has a lot of hidden value, um, whether it's a single family home with an ADU or single family home with a potential ADU or maybe a duplex and uh, and either, you know, house hack it or just, uh, you know, move in and just let the tenant pay for a portion of my mortgage while I save up my money and I buy another property. So, and, and that's slowly, it's not going to happen overnight. It's going to take time. You know, most people want 
you know, they think, okay, I'm just going to make a million bucks my first year. I'm just going to, you know, buy this property and it'll make me a millionaire like, you know, next month. Yeah. It's not going to happen. It's, it takes time. I mean, I look back now, I mean, it's, it's, we started in like 2015 and that's seven years ago. It feels like it was just yesterday, but I mean, we, it took time to get to where we are. And I think, uh, you know, if we start from zero, we're probably going to do the same thing. It's just going to take, you know, it's, it's going to be faster because yeah. now I know what I'm doing. But do you <laughs> believe that in today's society with uh, the market where we are, where oh, everything, absolutely. if somebody doesn't, it has nothing right now, is it possible to somebody to be financially successful within, with rentals if they have zero experience in today's market, just to get in and then just be consistent? Yes. Absolutely, yeah. If it's you, possible. Because a lot absolutely. of people feel like, oh my God, like they probably, mama gave them their parents gave them their money <laughs> we or they really won a lottery <laughs> or they flipped Bitcoin and they bought a bunch of, but a lot of the times it's just, it's time. Yeah, it's time. It's and, and then, and it's just, you know, um, it's, you got to start with, uh, get past the, uh, you know, if you're comfortable, if you want to be comfortable um, and, you know, you know, and, and make it, it's going to be hard. You, you have to go through some discomfort, whether it's, uh, you know, you're living in a duplex. It's not the most sexiest asset class. You know, <laughs> your friends are over, you know, they're yeah. coming over your house and you live in a duplex. Most people can't get they past that. They automatically drop the bar and you're you like, say, oh, like you're poor. Yeah. Yeah. Even though that person is making money, you know. It's insane. Or huh? like rent a portion of your house. But it's, it's, it's harder, but I would just, like it's I said. It's humbling. Let's put, let's put it out. It's yeah. really humbling. Yeah. But you have to realize this is temporary. You know, we've lived in, you know, not, you know, uh, some of our friends live in some really nice houses while we lived you know, for a while at a uh, at a detached duplex. We made it nice. It was nice. It worked for us. But that property kind of propelled us, to the uh, you know, so much, you know, because we saved all the money on rent and then it gained equity and then we rented out to somebody else. And now, now that property is paying for our new house, which is kind of, you know, Yana says it's a dream home. It's, I don't know. It's a new, yeah, it's my dream home. Once we're done remodeling it. it yeah. yeah, you guys bought a yeah. beautiful property. Thank you. Yeah, so 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 that property is getting paid by the property that we lived in before that was not so sexy, right? <laughs> gotcha. That's paying for the for the property that we we're we're remodeling now. So it but it took time, right? And it's it's do, you can you can, anybody can do it. Just making a smart choices for yeah. It's also yeah. uh, important to see once you got in in one, it's much easier to buy the second one because you can buy the second one with a low down payment again with a, because you're you buying have to put twenty percent. If you're buying it as an owner occupied, no, because then you say that this one that you lived in, you rent it out, you show your leases. You can get the financing. Uh, it basically gets washed. Your mortgage payment gets covered by your rent, so it's no longer your liability. So you can wow. buy a second one. Mm -hmm. Once you do it, so it's the second one. Same thing. You it's live like a there. Snowball. It's, it's like a snowball, snowball effect. Exactly. It really it's like a is. slow train. You know, it, it takes a while for it to get started, but once you get going, it's easy. Now you can use the income from your second property to buy your third property, and then your income from your third property to buy your fourth property, and you just got a number one is make sure you buy it right just yeah. you know underwrite it correctly if you do it right i mean you can you can go like this what about like with uh, current market conditions obviously single family get hit the hardest because affordability went down 40 percent you know you know the rules mm -hmm. is if it's uh, interest rate goes up one percent the property mm -hmm. goes down ten yeah. percent so if interest rate went up four percent property need to get to 40% discount. We, it's not there, probably down like 15 to 20, but there's a lot more room to go. But mm -hmm. when it comes into rentals, rentals didn't drop that much as a regular well, home. So, yeah, because you think about it, I mean, the people that can't afford because of that, they the reason, rent. they're going to rent. Right. Yeah. So, you have so, so we, we're going to have more renters. I feel like we're going to have the, the worse, you know, the the more expensive housing gets. I think they're pushing those people to be more rentals because they yeah. don't want people to have financial freedom. That's how I feel like. Well, That's and, so, my and so you know what? I think it's going to get down to, like we've been to Switzerland yeah. last year and it's incredible how, you know, expensive those properties are in Switzerland. I mean, it's, it's a small country, right? With a lot of people want to move there. And um, we spoke to some local so locals and they said, look, our house is worth, you know, the regular house is worth like 2 million euros, right? Mm -hmm. If you're a college student, how the heck are you going to afford that house, right? Student, and, student debt. <laughs> <laughs> so they're going to be renters or they're going to just it's rely a, on their parents. Yeah. 
So I feel, I feel like, like we're going down here too, right? We're going, so that's where I was going. I feel like we're slowly getting there. So that's why you got to get in. The, like, the faster just get the in. better. Just yeah. get in. It doesn't matter what the market does. You can find deals in so any market. Do you market. think this is the reason why Dave Ramsey said that this is the best time to buy a house right now in the next five years? Because the house will go up. Because he, he said like, oh, you know, marry the, the house. They did yeah, yeah, just yeah. Yeah, yeah. So like... People's like, no, it's not, not. That's not what you should be doing. But like, if you think about it, if what if he does know stuff that no one else knows? What if the the way the interest rates and the, the Federal possible. Reserve they're pushing towards being more like a mm -hmm. renter nation? I mean, yeah, you can buy a house today, but then what if in the next five years the house is worth a million bucks? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And I it think it becomes like Switzerland, that like two million for something that. The material is not even cost 100k on the house. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, right. Right. It's possible. I mean, I, he might have a point there, but I I feel like we're still. I mean, prices are still going to decline um, a little bit more, but not to say that it's going to get more affordable to buy, because uh, I I feel like a lot of people lose. You know, unemployment is going to go down. More people are going to lose their jobs. Um, it's going to be harder to buy for some people. But if you have the opportunity to buy, if you're if you're pre-approved, then buy buy something. It just Get get at least um, you know, find you know it doesn't have to be the nicest nicest yeah. home something that makes sense, you yeah. know. And there are I a lot would of say deals. don't wait to buy, buy and wait. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, and just don't go out. Smart, yeah. yeah, don't go out the first. You know, uh, the first new build no. you see, yeah. no, no, it no. has to make sense. You know, of course, do the numbers and make yes. sure the rent at least covers the mortgage. Well, let me ask you this: like, there was statistics that came up. I, I read online that in August, uh, over thirty percent of real estate agents were not able to make their August payment for their either mortgage or rent. Oh wow! Because then no one's buying, no one's selling. There's not a much, so they don't have the paycheck, right? Mm -hmm. Why, if you're a real estate agent, why don't you? There's a lot of agents. I think maybe like out of ten, maybe nine of them don't even own real real estate as far as exactly. rental portfolio. Yeah. Why, if you're ready in the field, why they don't? They get don't in? understand it. I mean, there's a lot of people that just don't. Well, first of all, they they hear these horror stories from you know if you know the tenant ruining your property, California, you know tenant protection laws. And they're afraid they they or they just overthink it or they just you know it took five years for them to just decide on something you know to buy a house or not yeah. and, and just a lot of them just i don't know they just they're just either afraid or they don't know how or they just don't know what to expect you and know? statistics was just on the real estate agents real estate agents. Real i estate think one. well think oh. about it how many real estate agents do you know there's a lot of real estate so agents <laughs> who <laughs> are <laughs> not <laughs> active real estate agents they're really not they're more like oh this seems like a nice business. I'm gonna get yeah. my license. I'm gonna buy myself a home and my sister yeah. a home. And I my think we were like on euphoria. <laughs> like when Bitcoin hit 69k, we were like when the real estate market <laughs> was in April. Like that was like you go to coffee yeah. shop. You're oh a real estate gosh. agent. This guy's real estate I, agent. I don't even want to say I'm a real estate agent. <laughs> I'm like, uh, I'm just, I'm just uh, an investor. <laughs> <laughs> real estate investor, yes. Yeah, but there's just a lot of agents out there that do sell a lot of real estate, but they don't actually buy anything for themselves. Yeah. And I feel yeah. like it's a mistake, and obviously mm -hmm. it's my opinion, because I mean, you make commissions, you make good money. Like you never know how stable your job can be as an agent. Oh, like yeah. look, it was, it was pumping, boom, 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 everybody making 20, 30K as, you know, assignment fees, commissions. Now 30% of realtors can make more August uh, mortgage payment. Oh, that's mm -hmm. crazy. I mean, So yeah. then like, if you had, like you guys did, 13, 15 units, that cash flow, maybe you will not be one of those statistics. No, we, we'd be okay. So like, so, you know, we the properties pay for themselves and they bring cash flow, right? So we accounted it's for amazing. that. So the income that we made from our day jobs or our careers, all of it went back into real estate. So all of it went back into multi-units. Um, into the down know, payments. Because we, we expected at some point we're going to see this, you know, slow market. And w like we're not gonna have a paycheck. Yeah. Like, don't no, what do we do? Nothing pumps forever, even rockets. Yeah. They go yeah. down. Right, right. <laughs> it's they gotta land somewhere. It's cyclical, right? Real estate is cyclical. Yeah. So, and that's what we kind of accounted for, and just you know, and and uh, yeah. But but I don't know. Honestly, I don't know. I feel like more people should. <laughs> you know invest invest and just uh, kind of instead of relying on yeah. your four hundred one k or your just put that money not into a lot real estate. Not even have four hundred one k's. 
They don't need yeah. that. They don't. Like, unless you work 9 to 5, but like, realtors, yeah. they don't. No. Uh, well, they don't I, have. I cashed out on my 401k and bought <laughs> a property used, for yeah, that. The <laughs> one thing, if you have 401k, you can use it towards buying your primary residence, and it's uh, you don't get penalized for it. So if you have it, that's the way oh. to cash, <laughs> cash it out <laughs> legally. <laughs> but now with uh, 401k, a lot of people with the market being so low, they probably got sliced. In oh, yeah. Oh, yes. It went down. 30%. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yes. Probably people who are retiring looking at it like, oh, my God, like... Yeah, yeah. Which is I'm glad I got out a couple of years ago. This was uh, what post pre pre COVID. I think it was it pre COVID that we yeah. cashed out. I, I had a yeah. small mom of mine as well, so we just cashed it out. We, our 401k is our properties. What you guys do before real estate? I was in the healthcare industry, uh, completely different. I was just miserable there. You know, I was just kind of. I thought I wanted to be, you know, um, a nurse, you know, or a nurse practitioner, and I thought that'd be cool because I, you know. But then I started working at the hospital. I was like, dude, this is like not me. I don't, <laughs> I don't see myself being here for for five years, ten years, and and uh, you know, I, I think I um, uh, who who was it that I listened to? Was it maybe Grant? I don't know. I, I read uh, Rich Dad Poor Dad, and I just kind of started thinking about it. I'm like, like I'm doing something wrong. Yeah, you're married uh, to a paycheck. In a yeah. Way. Yes. I think yes. Uh, actually, Kevin O'Leary you said, a salary is a drug. That they give to people to take away their dreams. Yes. Yes. Because yes. they just give it to it's you. A, you're comfortable. You're there. You're like a guinea pig and you just ride insane. It's a false sort of, sense of stability. Yes. Yes. It really is. And it, it just, it wasn't, you know, a lot of people are, they, they're made for that profession. I wasn't. So. When we met, he still was uh, part-time working in health and, uh, industry and two days, a day before he had his work day in the hospital, he would get down. He'd get depressed. I was like, what are you doing to yeah, yourself? So, so it's not Friday I mean, is like you're, you know, you're having a great day. It's Friday. And then you have Saturday. And then Sunday, you're like, damn, got to go back to work tomorrow. Like, <laughs> ah. You got to do what you enjoy. You really so what do. made yeah. you change your mind? And when, when did you came to the point that it was re- like a realization, like, that's it. No more hospital. I'm done. I'm going to get my license. Like, wow. Well, I don't I don't know if there was like a, you know, point like that, but it was just kind of like I slowly, slowly, you know, got to it. I was like, OK, what do I want to do? And I, I I always look at, you know, I always like driving and looking at properties. So uh, the hospital was in ESAC. Right. So you and, and some, you know, ESAC like in Sacramento, beautiful homes, beautiful so million homes. dollar properties, one point five, like somewhere in like three million dollar properties. And I'm walking around and I'm thinking like I'm never going to be able to afford this house. If I do what I'm doing now, I got to do something, something else. So yeah, I'm wow. thinking, okay, what can I do? Like, what do I like doing? And I thought, well, I like selling. I like, um, you know, I like cars. I used to, I used to like flip cars. I would buy a car from the auction, you know, fix it up and flip it. But I'm like, eh, you know, I don't know if I want to do that. That need a shop. What else can I do? Well, I like homes. I go around and I look at homes. I, I want to see inside, you know, I want to see how they're designed. I like the architecture. I like the, you know, everything about it. Why don't I just, you know, do something that has to do with homes? And that's how we kind of gradually, you know, thought, oh, realtor. Okay, I can, I can do that. And I you, like- you guys met when you were still in the hospital, right? Yes. He yes. got his real estate license and I was doing real estate for like, maybe two years already. So you showed him the ropes. Jana Jana (laughs) showed me the ropes. Jana was my boss. (laughs) She still is my boss. (laughs) Am I? (laughs) No, uh, I actually... Listen to me, Grasshopper. (laughs) Listen to me. This is how we're going to do this. This is not hospital for you. We don't clock out at five o'clock, right? (laughs) Yeah, don't work from nine to five. Go with your business and you'll work 24-7. Yeah. You get to choose which 14 hours you work. I came to real estate actually from the financial field I was doing... uh, a lot of pension plans actually for, for not 401ks um, when people uh, retire from their work they have 401ks for three bs they would transfer it into like fixed indexed annuities i didn't like um when you could uh, when i was losing money for my uh, for my clients uh, so i was doing the fixed stuff it was like very straightforward thing so uh, since 21 i was doing that so for seven years about i was doing that and all of my clients were 50 and over because that's the age group right and i loved it at first because i learned a lot but then uh the older i got i realized all my friends are 50 and over and i'm like <laughs> i'm getting old with them like what, <laughs> what's going on i need to switch it up i want to do something and i loved watching hgtv 
and with HGTV, I was like, okay, maybe real estate it is. Because I, my parents were buying a home. I, I kind of was going, checking out the home. So I was like, this is probably something I can do. I got my license and I fully, just one day, went from one career to completely <laughs> different. Wow. But hey, it turned out pretty amazing for you guys. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah, guys really met, did. now you manage 15... Fifteen doors, twelve. Twelve. Uh, well, well I'm, twelve. Twelve is on the way. The one we live in. Prophesying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll video, take it. I'll take next it. Next <laughs> video we'll do. You'll be fifteen, and then hopefully we can find ourselves a really well, big first apartment can, and buy it. Yeah, and well, first I gotta remodel that tiny home, and maybe I might need your help think, on that. If you have, yeah, a tiny home maybe will count like a half. <laughs> you know, maybe fifteen. Oh, it dude, brings the I, same I think, income. I think the cash flow is gonna be <laughs> pretty insane on that. I mean, just based on the you know. The, the 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 stats I looked at for for tiny yeah. homes it's gonna it's gonna have like a little sauna it's gonna have like a That's little so jacuzzi fire. it's gonna it's gonna be like near a creek I you mean, should build a sauna in your house over there where you bought it I do I home. want to yeah I want build to build a do sauna it. and then like once a week we just black out the calendar I'll I'll come. <laughs> have a nice <laughs> session yeah let's sure. go let's yeah. do this let's do this yeah, it's so fun. Fun. I'm that's yeah. awesome that's really cool man thank you so much guys i mean it was a privilege and honor to have you guys on the podcast i mean we, i feel like i've learned myself a lot that even if you don't have anything in real estate as long as you have your really stable job just start so if you're miserable in your nine to five job and you might be working yeah. in the hospital or anywhere if you have a really good income and a decent like just buy the first duplex move in in one unit rent the other one and then later mm -hmm. on how how long did you wait until you um you need to live to live a year so before a year. you can buy uh, another one as investment gotcha. property so pretty much anyone can do it and as long as your cash flow covers your earned income then leave your job right was that something would you if, recommend if, if that's they don't what you want go because some people not really good sales people like like not everybody's good in sales right mm -hmm. yeah so some people like introverts so I feel like if you are good in sales, go ahead and get your first deal so you can secure the, you know, the capital, yeah. have the cash flow, then go get your real estate license. But if you don't want to get a real estate license, but you want to build assets, it's really good to keep your nine to five job yeah. and, and then build those doors because you know the biggest investment vehicle you have is your income. Yes. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and 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 just you know, I would emphasize, you know, it's it's going to be hard to cash flow on a single family. Just look at you know one or t uh, one plus units, two units, uh, three unit properties, and not you don't necessarily need to start with a four unit or three unit. Just get a nice, you know, find an investor friendly realtor in your market. And uh, and just you know make sure that you know you interview them. Make sure they they have properties themselves. Um, and just decide what you want to do. Do you want to do long term? Do you want to do short term? Like, just do something. May you can rent out a room in your house if you if you need to. That's key. And just kind of start I didn't from think that. About it that way. Yeah. If you're short on income, you need a little bit of a couple of thousand uh, thousand bucks a month. You can easily cash flow. Oh, that. we made. I mean, so we we were making a hundred bucks plus the cleaning fee a day. So uh, huh. cleaning fee was like forty bucks. We were getting a hundred forty bucks a day. Wow. For we were room. booked for. <laughs> And we didn't make it available. Um, you know, some days we oh, just wanted see, our no. privacy. Uh, Fridays we wanted to ourselves. You know, Saturdays we had people over. So we made it available for like three days a week. And they were all booked. Wow. So it, if you it keep it open. It paid our mortgage fully. Oh, yeah. I mean, wow. you can possibly make it. Give it a try, guys. If you have <laughs> yeah. it, go on the Airbnb. 140 bucks. Create an account. Bucks. Put in a room. Just make sure you're protected from like, you know, pets and no smoking. And then put in cleaning fee, then you clean it. That's a great way of yeah. starting something. Yeah, 140. Cool. Yeah, so I'm doing the math. That's 140 bucks a day if you if you keep it booked for 30 days. Um, that's uh, 4,200 dollars. What would you do with 4,200 dollars? <laughs> 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 Greece. <laughs> no, that's Mykonos. really cool. Mykonos. <laughs> you don't have to buy a 500 thousand dollar property, right? Just to do that. That's amazing. You already yeah. have. You already have an asset. You already have an asset. Yeah. But you, you just, just make it nice. Make it nice. Take some good pictures. You know, don't use your iPhone 6 to take the pictures. <laughs> you know, pay the professional again. Going back to professionals. Yes. Pay the professional. Take a picture. Yeah. So That's awesome. Well, thank you guys yeah. so much. Thank you it for was, having uh, us. Yeah, of Absolutely. course. You're always welcome here. It was a lot, a lot of education when it comes to investment real estate, duplexes, fourplexes. And now you have a way of making a little bit of cash flow. Uh, step by step how to get your first rental property and just a way of getting out from the 9 to 5 job which is yep. pretty cool Yeah. so thank yeah. you again I appreciate you guys thank thanks you. for having thank us you. of course like always hit the subscribe button 
And do me a huge favor, if you want to see more details when it comes in underwriting a duplex, even a fourplex, drop a comment below. I promise you, I'll get Igor back on this video and we'll go step by step to dissect it. Even though we went into broader when it comes into real estate, we can go super narrow. Just drop a comment below, let me know if that's something that'll be interesting for you and we'll make it happen.